All right, let's talk about tax return preparers. We've obviously mentioned them a few times thus far, but let's dive into them. They are going to play a crucial role in assisting individuals with their income tax preparation, whether it's H&R Block, whether it's your local accountant in their office in a strip mall, whether it's a massive uh, CPA firm, whether it's a big four, whether it's just a person who works for a company and prepares their taxes. We've got many different types of tax return preparers. They're going to ensure, hopefully ensure, that tax returns are accurate, compliant, and submitted in a timely manner. These are items to know. Well, first off, you don't need a license. And if you thought you needed a CPA license to uh, be a tax return preparer, uh, shocking news to you here. Maybe it's time to back out. No, you should not back out. You made it this far. What do you need? You only need a P10. We'll talk about that. So you don't need a license to prepare returns. Anyone can prepare a return. If you want to prepare a return for yourself, you don't need to get a P10. But if you're doing it on behalf of someone else, you need to get a P10. It's not the most difficult process. You kind of just go on the IRS website, apply for a P10, and you get it. I've gotten one before. However, if you are technically legally considered a tax return preparer, you need to be paid for your services. That's an important point to note. And just like the previous slide, just like the slide before it, where is all this coming from? It's coming from the multiple choice questions and sims you're likely to see. Now, I'm not just saying this for my health. I'm not just saying it because I think it's important. Nope. This is what you're likely going to see on the exam. Now, PTINs, this is a, just a tax ID number. You're going to sign the tax return that you prepared it and put your PTIN number there. Individuals with a PTIN can prepare tax returns, excluding interns, sorry, interns, or those providing only technical assistance. Those without professional credentials, such as enrolled agents, CPAs, or attorneys, cannot represent clients before the IRS. It's an important point to know for, again, multiple choice questions. What about this point? Unlimited representation rights before the IRS. Enrolled agents, and these are individuals who, it's a certification. I'm actually not as familiar about it. I did work with people who got it. If you don't want to go through the whole process of the CPA exam, because as you know, it is a whole process, it is a certification that is a step below the CPA designation. I'm not saying anything bad about it, but the CPA exam does have our all of our beautiful parts and lots of procedures within them. Now, enrolled agents, CPAs, and attorneys, I'm sure you're familiar with what attorney is if you've seen any sort of TV show in the U.S., have unlimited representation rights before the IRS, allowing them to represent clients in audits if they get the client gets audited, appealing the decision of that audit and any collection matters, meaning the IRS is trying to collect from you and you're still trying to fight it. Signing tax repair. Well, the signing tax repair is the individual who has the primary responsibility for the tax return and must sign it, indicating their responsibility for its accuracy. Yeah, you might be thinking whether it's audit or tax. Hey, I work for a massive accounting firm. And guess what? You've got a team of 30 people working on one tax return or a team of 30 people working on an audit. But at the end of it, there's just one signature for the either the opinion for an audit or for the tax return. So how does that work? Do you all sign it? Do you all get a group signature? Nope, there is going to be one person who ends up signing it. However, let's talk about those non-signing tax preparers. So anyone, so any non-signing tax preparer, anyone on that 30 person team, let's say one signs it, so there's 29 people left. A non-signing tax preparer prepares all or a substantial portion of the tax return, but does not sign it. They may still be held responsible for the accuracy of the return under certain, certain circumstances. So your classic example, big accounting firm, big CPA firm, you got a partner, you got some directors, managers, you got some senior accountants, some staff accountants. They're all going to probably have a substantial role to play in completing that tax return. And as such, in a court, they'd all be held responsible for varying levels. Probably not going to come after that poor staff accountant, but if the staff accountant was negligent, then maybe. Can't say I'm too familiar. Next, and lastly, we've got substantial authority. Well, tax preparers must have substantial authority for tax treatments they recommend. So you can't just start speaking uh, out of nowhere and saying, oh, yeah, take that deduction. No, you need to, as we mentioned before, we've got all those sources of literature. I mean, there's a lot. Some of them are not the highest level of literature, the highest level of authority. However, whether it's periodicals, doing your just Googling, just going and doing some research, uh, or talking to another taxpayer or a CPA, you can talk to other people and get advice there. So you have substantial authority. You have to have substantial authority for anything you recommend. It's got to be something you've seen done and accepted by the IRS before, or it's got to be something that follows the IRC. It's got to be something you can't just, again, say, oh, yeah, no, totally. Uh, you should take that deduction just for no reason at all. You got to rely on those primary sources, regulations, revenue rulings, and court cases. IRS publications are not primary sources, just another note there for multiple choice question purposes. So if the IRS comes out with a publication that is not in addition to the IRC or any of these other things, that's not a primary source. However, these are primary sources. Hey there, are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, 
but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material? We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.